If you want to build real-time applications in .NET, you need to know how to use SignalR. In this video, I'm going to show you a practical example of introducing a typing indicator inside a chat user interface. We're going to implement this using WebSockets, SignalR, and just .NET 9 on the backend. So let's dive in. So here's what the client interface looks like. You have to type in a name and then you can join a chat room. I have two browser windows open, which represents two distinct sessions inside of SignalR. And I can join the same chat room from both windows. And now I can start exchanging messages between these two sessions. So you can see as I type a message in one of the screens, saying anybody in here and send it is going to appear on the other end or any other user that's inside the chat room and also what I want to show you in this video is how you can build a typing indicator like what you can see here when another user that's inside the chat room is typing something I'm obviously typing just a dummy message here but whenever I start typing the other users will be notified that I'm typing also if there are multiple users we can accommodate for that by writing something else to signal how many users are currently communicating within the chat room but first I want to briefly explain how how WebSockets work. Let's jump into the drawing board and I'm going to represent the client and the server application with a couple of boxes. So let's say that the client application is green and the server is red. So let's say server and client. I'm going to zoom in a little to make this better visible. So how do WebSockets allow us to communicate between our client and our server applications? Now in our example, we're going to use something called SignalR, which is an abstraction that allows us to implement real-time communication between our server applications and our clients. The client connects to the server by connecting to a SignalR hub, let's say it's called the chat hub, and this establishes a connection. Now, typically, this is going to use WebSockets, which you can think of as a long-lived pipeline that allows the server and the client to send messages both ways. So let's call this the WebSocket. I'm going to slightly reduce this. So you can think of it like this. I'm describing this very roughly. I won't be too technical, but essentially a WebSocket represents a long-lived TCP connection between the client and the server. And both of them can send messages in any direction of this connection. And because it's long-lived, it's significantly faster than regular HTTP requests. This is why we use WebSockets for real-time communication, like in the chat user interface that you just saw. Now, if we were to use raw WebSockets on the server, the implementation would be significantly more complex. Luckily, with SignalR, this becomes very straightforward. So let me walk you through what we currently have on the server when it comes to the SignalR implementation. So here is my .NET 9 chat API, and it's a very simple application which exposes a SignalR hub in the hubs folder. Now, to be able to use SignalR, the only prerequisite is adding the SignalR services and creating your hub. One thing you will have to keep in mind is course. In this example, I configured a very loose policy to allow my client application to connect to the server. I mentioned the hub. We're going to explain what it is in just a moment. Another thing we have to do is expose the hub as a sort of an endpoint, a WebSocket endpoint from the API by calling map hub, specifying the hub type and giving it some URI where the client applications can connect. Now let's look at the chat hub class. So it implements the base hub class from SignalR. This can be loosely typed like in this example. They can also be strongly typed where you define an interface representing what are the methods that you can call on the client applications. Any method that you expose on the hub like this with a public accessor is going to be callable from the client applications. So we have a couple of methods that I'm going to go over, which are join chat room, send message, leave chat room, and then a special method called on this connected async. So what do we have inside of the chat hub? Well, this is envisioned like a chat application with just one chat room. I have this defined inside of a constant, and I also have a concurrent dictionary where I can keep track of connected users. So from the UI application, when a user wants to connect to the SignalR hub, it's going to first establish the connection to the server, and then it's going to try to join a chat room with a specific username. If the username is empty, we can send a notification to the caller, letting them know that the username is required. So you can see we're using this client's property on the hub to access the caller, which represents the calling client. We can also use the context property to get information about the current caller connection. And the interesting piece of information that we have here is the connection ID. We're going to store this in the dictionary, add the user to a group, which is going to simplify sending messages between other clients that are part of the same group. And then we can access 
a signal or a group by the name and invoke a client method by using send async. So this allows us to send a request to the client. Let's say we have some user joint callback and we pass in the username to notify the other clients who is the new user. We can also notify the caller back if we want something to happen when they successfully join a room. Then there is the send message method on the hub, which allows us to send a message from the client to the hub and broadcast this message to other clients also connected to the same chat room. Now notice that the arguments that we can pass in to a callback function don't have to be a primitive type. They can be an object, like in this example here, containing the username, the message, and the timestamp of when the message was sent. And we're going to call the receive message callback on the other clients. And then the leave chat room is very similar. We want to remove this user from the group by using the connection ID. And we also want to notify the other clients that are part of the same chat room that some user has left. We also need to implement this when a user disconnects, which means they leave the chat room without explicitly clicking on the leave chat room button, which is exposed on the UI. So that's it when it comes to the SignalR server. When I run this and spin up my client application, this is just going to work, minus the typing indicator. Now, let me just quickly walk you through the client application. So what I have here is a completely static application with just one index.html file and a single JavaScript file. To be able to connect to SignalR, I'm using the SignalR client library, which I can download from a content delivery network. I'm also using Tailwind CSS here for stylization. So if the UI looks somewhat familiar, that's what I'm using to stylize the user interface. So the UI is pretty simple. The JavaScript file uses a class to initialize the chat application. And there are a couple of components here, initializing the HTML elements, then initializing the event listeners. So what happens when we invoke some action on the user interface, and then initializing the SignalR connection. So this is made available through the client library, and we can instantiate this by calling new SignalR hub connection builder, specify the URL pointing to the hub on the SignalR server. If we use authentication, we can also specify an access token here. We have automatic reconnect configuration and then we build the connection. In the setup SignalR events helper, we configure the relevant callbacks, for example, when reconnecting, when we successfully reconnect, when we close the connection, and then what happens when we invoke the respective callbacks, like joining the room, leaving the room, user joining, user leaving, receiving a message, receiving an error. Finally, we can start the connection by just saying connection start, and this is going to open up the connection to the server. Now, one caveat, we were talking about WebSockets at the start of this video, but this isn't the only supported transport. However, it is the preferred one. So if WebSockets work, they're going to be used. Otherwise, there are fallbacks to server sent events or polling, which all work with SignalR and you don't really have to think about it. Now, WebSockets are the most efficient approach, which is why they're talked about so often. So this is the client app. Now let's see what we need to change here and the backend to implement a typing indicator. I'll start by updating the HTML element and there is an element here, which is my message input. And here I want to show a typing indicator element when the user starts typing. So I'm going to drop this right at the top of this element. And here's what we have inside. It's going to be a div with the ID of typing indicator. And it's just going to contain an animated element where I can easily change the text for who is currently typing. And then all the rest of the logic is going to live inside of my JavaScript file. When it comes to the JS file, I will have to make quite a few updates here. In the constructor, I'm going to drop two more values the typing timeout, which is just going to start a timer when the user starts typing. And if it expires, then it means the user stopped typing and we want to notify other clients that they have stopped typing. We also want to keep a set of any typing users. This is going to help us display this on the UI. When initializing our elements, we also want to grab the typing indicator that we just created. So I'm going to say document get element by ID and access the typing indicator and the typing text. If you recall, these are the IDs here, which identify our div container and the span containing the text. We also want to have some listeners on the message input. We're going to add listeners when the user enters this element. So we can use an input event listener. And then when they leave one, we can use a blur event listener. And I'm going to define two callbacks, the handle typing and handle stop typing functions that currently don't exist, but we're going to introduce them in a moment. In our SignalR setup, we also need respective callbacks. So I'm going to define them at the end here. And let's say we have two callbacks, user started typing and user stopped typing and respective handlers for these callbacks. So let me drop in all of these functions that I was talking about here, and then we can discuss what they do inside. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom of this file and let's say right under escape HTML, I'm going to 
to define them. So we have a couple of new functions now. Handle typing, which we want to invoke when the user starts typing. And essentially what we do here is use our signalR connection to invoke a hub method called start typing. This is going to notify the other clients that somebody has started typing. And we also initialize a timeout for when we want to trigger the stop typing function, which is going to just call the signalR hub and notify other clients that the current user has stopped typing. So that means we need two more methods on the signalR hub. We're going to be adding these in just a moment. Now there's also the callbacks. So here's the user started typing callback, which provides the username. And if this is the current user, User that started typing then we do nothing otherwise we add the user to the typing users and we update the typing indicator we do the same thing when the user stop typing except we delete them from the typing user set and then we again update the typing indicator and what happens in here well we're using the typing user set to check if there are any users if there are none we can just hide the typing indicator otherwise we can check how many users are currently typing if it's one user then we can use their username and say that they are typing if it's two users for example we can say something like Alice and Bob are typing and if it's multiple users we can say Alice and let's say three or five others are currently typing so we're being dynamic here and handling a situation when multiple users are trying to send something in the chat room then we update the typing text element and we show the typing indicator so that's it on the client side now for all of this to work we also need to update our backend and all we need are just two simple methods the first one is going to be start typing that the signal our client invokes on the server when they start typing in the message box and all that happens here is we just notify other clients in the group by using clients others in group and we invoke the user started typing callback so then you can imagine how similar the stop typing method should be it's the same thing except we call a different callback in this case user stop typing so with these two methods in place i'm going to start the signal our server and i will also start my client application using a local http server so now my client should be available on localhost 8080 so if i connect to the chat room with my two users and now I start typing, you can see the typing indicator show up. I also want to demo what happens in the SignalR connection. So you can see it here, and here are the messages that are being sent. So let's reconnect to the SignalR hub. I'll use the same username and say join room. So you can see we're calling join chat room. Then there's the user joined callback. We sent stop typing. And if I try to start typing again, you can see how many start typing events we are sending to the server. So when we stop typing for two seconds, then the stop typing callback is invoked. So if I send a message, you'll be able to see a send message here and then a receive message callback being sent to the other clients. So I hope you enjoyed this practical example of using SignalR to build a typing indicator in a chat UI. And if you want to grab the complete source code, you can do that by joining my community. The link to that is going to be right below in the video description. And if you want to learn more about SignalR, I recommend watching this video next, where I'll show you how you can send real-time updates from your server application to your clients from a background job. So take a look at this video if you want to learn more about SignalR. Make sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. And until next time, stay awesome.